What's cracking guys, Omar Esau here, back with another video. In this video today, I want to talk about the most important exercise I've not been doing. Uh, I believe it was Mike Menser that called it the king of the upper body exercises, just like how the squats are the king of the lower body exercises. I have a perfectly good reason why I haven't been doing it, but I want to talk about it today. The benefits, my recommendations, ways to tweak it to try and optimize the lift, and that is dips. Now, there's a really good explanation. In fact, I filmed the whole video earlier today talking about this, but there's too much damn noise at the gym. In this video today, I want to talk about the best exercise I haven't been doing. I'm talking today about the benefits of doing dips and also why I haven't been doing dips for years and years. And that is because four years ago, I dropped in 2012 315 on my chest. I was a yellow bro uh, using suicide grip, an idiot. Luckily nothing bad happened, but the lingering effects, and I never talked about this on camera, was that I would get sternum pain when I would do dips afterwards, so I never experienced it before. And I know some individuals, just due to the nature of doing dips, get sternum pain when they do dips. But I never had that before, it only happened afterwards, and it really bummed me out because it made me unable to do dips comfortably, and so I just took them away from my training routine, and that's why you've probably never seen a tutorial of me talk at all about dips, despite them being a fantastic exercise. Weightlifters do them, bodybuilders do them, powerlifters, I think they're just calisthenic guys, they're just one of those fundamental core exercises, and I think to me, they complete that holy, let's call it trilogy or trinity of upper body push exercises. You got the bench press, which is a little bit more pec dominant. You got the overhead press, which is a little bit more anterior shoulder dominant. And then you got dips, which are more tricep dominant. By and large, these are just, you know, generalizations. And I would say for myself, as someone who naturally, out of those three major muscle groups, gravitates more towards building a mass in my chest, so the ass chest, right, uh, when it comes to the bench press, doing variations like the close grip bench press are good, but I still honestly feel it no matter what tweaks I do, a lot in my chest. And that's because when you have a very dominant muscle group, it kind of takes over. For me, out of those three, naturally my triceps are actually the weakest, so I really need to do dips. So it's taken me a while, I honestly just took a long time off of them, but then I began thinking, I'm like, you know what, there's too many damn benefits. I think everyone, as long as you're capable, as long as they, uh, you know, cause you no pain, you should be doing them. And so I began just taking a look at the mechanics, and then I figured it out, I tweaked it in such a way, I've been testing it out for a while now, to make sure that it feels fine, safe on myself, and now I can do them, and I'm going to explain some of the tweaks, because I know some people... Back in the day, I, I would say dips were extremely popular, then some people were saying, oh, they're terrible for your shoulder health. I think if you have a predisposition towards shoulder problems, you have shoulder issues, if you have a lack of shoulder mobility in general, and you do dips and you experience pain, that's another issue. I'm talking about those out there that can do them and do them safely. There's some tweaks I want to talk about though, to really make them effective, to really get the most out of doing these dips. And that is the first one would be depth. When we talk about depth, it's much like the squat, it depends upon the individual. I see some people on one hand you have guys saying going like as low as possible, on the other hand people are just saying it's just not safe. I think the vast majority of people out there can at least go down to parallel and that's more than sufficient to induce you know, muscle damage and cause the muscles to grow. So at the very least, I think you should go to parallel if you can. So parallel, that means with the arm relative to the bar uh, itself. For a lot of people, they can actually go a little bit below parallel. So such as myself, what's comfortable for me is below parallel, not all the way down. And then I would say a small percentage of people, and note a small percentage of people, can go all the way down without any detrimental effects. So for most of you guys out there, I'd say try and go down to parallel. If you have mobility issues, you've got to work on that. But it also kind of comes down, quite honestly, to technique. And this is where I see people slip up. And that is because... There are variations that you can do. I know uh, Vince Garonda, he was a legendary coach back in the day. He had a variation where essentially you round the back and essentially you'd internally rotate, exaggerate that with your shoulders and cave the chest in as a means to try and target uh, kind of your chest a little bit more. But that position uh, and the position I see a lot of guys do the dips where they kind of really round forward, they cave their chest in. And that could put one, a lot of kind of pressure on your sternum and two also put pressure on your shoulders. So we're about trying to optimize the movement, try and maximize the benefits, minimize the risk. So what we want to do instead is have a tall chest, I like to say. And so you can think about before you start the movement of kind of retracting your shoulder blades, pulling them together, keeping your elbows in line 
with your wrist in line with the bar itself when you do the dip and instead keeping the chest up so it doesn't sag down or you internally rotate too much. Naturally you're going to internally rotate when you do a dip but over exaggerate that. You don't want to do that and you don't want that chest to cave in. For me when I talk about that sternum pain or how to avoid it, it's that bottom portion where you kind of, you're at that end range of motion essentially of your shoulders and so what happens, your chest kind of caves and your body caves forward to try and complete that movement. Now when you make a, di uh, a dynamic movement and you have a, a load, a weight, like uh, you have a belt with weight attached, that's just kind of not good for your body. So I would say chest tall, go to the appropriate depth and also the other key point, well body weight it is definitely easy when you get to loading the weight, control it, right? The difference with a dip versus a bench press or anything else is that the bench press, the bar, you're holding it firmly in your hands. When it comes to the dip, you kind of have that dip belt, you have the weight. The weight is usually swinging. Yeah, you could like kind of squeeze your legs together to hold the weight, but it's moving around. So there's a lot more variation. There's a lot more room for error. So I'd say take your time, slow down the tempo a little bit when it comes to dips. The final point that I want to talk about before I really talk about a few more tweaks is that you want to make sure that you extend all the way up and that is to really achieve you know maximum recruitment when it comes to your triceps. I see a lot of guys kind of in that you know in between phase where they're not going all the way down, they're not locking out and that's okay for constant tension but we're about trying to maximize muscular recruitment. If you saw my previous video about full range of motion, we're after the best possible range of motion we can do safely. When I also talk about dips however and I talk about the benefits I say how they can really build a lot of muscle when it comes to your triceps, I would view them as a better compound exercise than a close grip bench press for building your triceps. It's not an either or but again you only have so many exercises you could choose from. I would say dips are really key. The other tweak I want to talk about though to really feel it in the appropriate areas like your triceps, making sure the sternum you minimize the pain there or also your shoulders and I don't see a lot of people talk about this and that is to exert a little bit of a rotational force on the actual bars. Uh, for every person out there, it depends on your gym, you either might have parallel bars or what I personally prefer, a slightly V-shaped bar, V formation, so you're grabbing it on the inside so your elbows are out. That's a little bit more natural for most people with their shoulders, you have to experiment, uh, find out what works for you. But what I was going to say is when you're doing the dip, you actually want to exert a little bit, like I said, rotational force on the bar and this is to prevent the elbows, the shoulders, everything from rounding too far in. If you rotate out, what you're actually doing is opening up the shoulders a little bit, the elbows, to keep them in that proper line, to keep that chest tall and I find just kind of that mental cue of doing that puts me in a much better line when I'm doing dips. I feel a lot more in my triceps. I feel the activation there and like I said before, this is an area I really need to work on out of those three major muscles. My triceps are the most lagging. I do want to bring them up so I think it's important to get it right. It's a common exercise and sometimes common exercises like I said before, push-ups, they get overlooked. They don't get the appropriate amount of love that they deserve when it comes to bodybuilding, overall fitness, uh, weightlifting, powerlifting. But if you take a look at the masters, if you take a look uh, throughout the history of lifting, dips have been super popular. They were basically the upper body push exercise before the bench press became commonplace. So they really were uh, paramount when it comes to building muscle and I think they could build a lot of muscle. You got to keep in mind like Dr. Brad Schoenfeld would say that you have to hit up muscles from different angles, different exercises in order to recruit everything that you got. So I think everybody if you're capable with these tweaks hopefully, shoulder feels fine, sternum feels fine, that you're able to do dips, you should be doing dips. And like I said before, I think there's no contraindications. I see weightlifters do them, uh, powerlifters there'd be no reason as an accessory. I know Jeremy Hamilton used to do a shit ton of uh, dips. So I think they have a huge benefit. You guys should do them. That's all the time we have. Thank you so much for watching the video. I'm looking right into your soul. Yes, you. Make sure to like the damn video. Leave a comment below. Do you currently do dips? Yes or no? What benefits have you seen, if any, uh, from them? I had to look forward now, 2017, incorporating them more. It took me a while because I was, understandably, cautious uh, reincorporating dips just because I always got that sternum pain. But once I limited the range of motion a little bit, you know, I was still going below parallel, but also just some of those tweaks when I uh, talked about rotating a little bit with the hands, like exerting that force. So I'm just in a better line and keeping my chest tall. It felt a lot better. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I'll be seeing all you guys, my rascals, in that next video. Peace. Don't be a YOLO. Be a potato. Eat your vegetables, eat your vegetables, eat your fucking vegetables.